Fraser Lake, Laval, Logan, Mace, Andrew Makinson, Liz Makinson, Marit, McAllister Bell, McIntyre, Melia, Mitchell, Maloney, Morton, Monkey, Murray, Nicholas, O'Brien, O'Byrne, Parsons, Pitches, Prince, Kadir, Radford, Roberts, Robinson Collins, Robinson, Rothery, Shortall, Simich, Simon, Small, Smeader, Smith, Story, Sun, Thomas, Thompson, Tulin, Tommy, Walker, Walton, Wood, Woodhouse. So for the Second Amendment, it was 4-4, four, four, 70 against, and 0 abstention, sorry, I couldn't read it properly. So the Second Amendment falls. We now move to the main budget recommendation. Do any other members that haven't spoken wish to speak? Councillor Hinnigan? Thanks, Lord Mayor. I wasn't planning on speaking, but I really feel like I'm all speakers tonight. I've actually agreed with lots of things that have been said on all sides of the chamber tonight. Not so much this side, and I don't want to rewrite, start rewriting history either. But I think in terms of this budget, we've agonised, I know personally, I've agonised um, it's been the hardest one and I feel yet again I'm like Jesus with the fishes and the loaves how do you do it, how do you actually make it work when we've been cut and cut and cut and cut to the bone what I want to say is though we were given a really really difficult choice where it was you know the, the bins which I live and speak I really really did not want to support that living in a community like speak but that against the issue of our neighbourhood, our male neighbourhood fund and our citizen support, it's a no-brainer for me. I work with children and young people leaving the homeless system. That citizen support scheme is a lifeline. When they're not leaving the care system with or getting leaving care grants, they are literally coming and starting out on their own with nothing. No white goods, not a single thing. So that is, that is my first point to call in my day job. But in terms of our middle neighbourhood funds, that is our only autonomy as ward councillors. That is the only power we actually get up to listen to what our residents need in terms of our middle neighbourhood funds. Whether that be we need uniforms for kids going back to school, whether it be fuel, that gives us the only thing in this city that we've got control over as elected members in listening to our residents. That's why I'm supporting this budget. You know, I, I do believe everybody's worked really, really hard on it, but we haven't got any choice. 
It's not something that we want to do. But to listen to our residents, that's what we have to do. And that's the only thing. We have to think that some of these community groups that are getting money from our mail and they put funds, that's the only thing they can do to get match, to get match funds and from other places in order for them community groups to survive. So I urge everyone to think about your community groups. Those groups who actually got us through the pandemic, those community groups that were out knocking on people's doors, delivering food and actually keeping this city running. That's why I'm supporting this budget and that's why I urge everyone else to. Councillor Simic. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Well, I wanted to say, you know, I'm, I'm really enjoying my day job. And there's a lot more drama here than there is with my students. And so, uh, but it also saddens me this. I really take Council Heron's point about, you know, laughing and joking here. The budget is the most important meeting we have here as councillors, and this is a very serious matter. A lot of responsibilities here to set a fair and appropriate budget for the city, primarily keeping our communities, neighbourhoods and residents, citizens of Liverpool, at the forefront of our mind. And I can understand why some of my Labour comrades, that we have loved at, at some point, have decided to take a heavy decision to vote against it. It's a sad matter, really. But enough is enough because the austerity measures and the cuts that have been inflicted on the city of Liverpool by the coalition and now Conservative government have reached its breaking point. Now 12 years on, since 2011 or 10, the local authorities have got to fight from all sides. And thank you to the activists who are pushing us Thank you to all the engaged residents who have partook in the consultation process. Democracy is in all of our hands. Mayor and cabinet, ruling Labour Party, all the opposition parties, independent councillors and all the people. Discussions happen in political groupings but also amongst residents in our communities and on the streets with our engaged citizens. Together with many in this chamber, I'm eager to see visionary budget proposals in near future, a call for levelling up, a call for transformative policies and courage to do the right things by the people of Liverpool. Policies which are about innovative ideas and investment in services. Being an elected representative is a difficult job. It includes careful considerations, negotiations and hope. In this case, a hope that eventually we will get to a future where, as the Labour administration, we can be setting the budget with appropriate funding that is needed, which is truly for the benefit of people, planet and equality, which will help the city thrive. Budget which is about investment in our people and neighbourhoods. Now, this budget has gone through consultations and select committee scrutiny. It's been defended, but this doesn't mean that we are all thoroughly happy with it. In the ideal world, we don't want the budget, which includes charges to the green bill or which is cutting adult social care services, budget which places community libraries at risk in the near future. But we must remain a critical voice through our council structures, through public engagement, through scrutiny and continue lobbying the central government for appropriate funding. I truly hope that in the next year and future years, we will have learned our lessons from this bitter experience tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hings. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I take on the sentiments, obviously, with uh, Councillor Hinnigan, um, but there was an alternative, and the alternative was is to have the Labour group through this process that we had a level and up paper a level of up paper that was written up by Labour members that was tried, we tried to give it to the Labour group and it was dismissed. It was a, it was a level of up paper that we could have avoided what, we're, or what you were going to vote for tonight. It was as simple as that and it was never allowed to see the, le the light of day. It was never ever allowed to see it and that's why we're sitting over here tonight because there was an alternative and you just rejected it. 
So that's why we're going to take the impossible decision of voting against uh, uh, the, these tonight. Because there was the alternative and you did not give it the light of day. Thank you, Lord Mayor.
protects vital services and invest, invests in the future direction of our city. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Rothery, then Mumby, then Councillor Ghost. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I, I agree with what you said, Councillor Hennigan, in terms of how resilient our community organisations are. But I also have to state that through the abdication of our duty as leaders and as a local government and national government, that our organisations have to come into play. And they're not being treated fairly because there's something on the cards in terms of asking for back rent. I know of two such organisations who are crucial to the livelihood of their communities who are now being told that they have to pay back rent on the, on the uh, premises that they rent uh, and have rented for many years. And on, in some instances, on a 99-year peppercorn rent. So this needs to be looked at. They shouldn't be um, being charged with these fees when all the work they do is all community focused. We're going to the point about um, the, the alternative budgets that are being put forward. I mean, I think we've got very short memories in this chamber. Because if people look back to 10 years ago, our strategy was about invest to save, invest to earn. And that's how we made sure that we bought places like the QR building, because we knew that we'd be able to recoup money back from it. Things like John Lennon Airport, the dividends that we have, and that the fees that we can pull out of that, that was all done because we knew we were going to miss a rainy day, a day when we were going to have even more cuts, and we just could no longer. Uh, put those, uh, those cuts against our communities. That day is today. So for somebody to turn around and say that a fully uh, uh, looked at budget in terms of the investor save that's been in this chamber for 10 years, it hasn't just turned up 10 minutes ago, it's been knocking around this chamber for 10 years and if people were honest on that side of the chamber, you'd admit that it was there and you'd admit that you'd have knowledge of it. So to turn around and say it's not fully costed and it's not robust and you'll have to shelve it for the next two years is ridiculous. The big issue here is that we are passing on cuts, and yes they are cuts, not savings, as the, the terminology that's been used for months until people were shamed into calling it for what it is. The cuts that we're passing on, we don't need to pass those cuts on. You know, we've got money there. We can, we've got many, many options that we didn't have 10 years ago. We've fought to keep those options on the table all these years. So I suggest that you go back and look at the investor save model and look at the money that we've got at our disposal and you look at utilising that to stop the cuts against our communities. Our communities are on their knees. They can't take any more cuts. I don't know what people don't understand that. I don't even know why we're still debating the cuts. I'll be voting for the Labour Group budget. Um, it will come as no shock to members of my group because I'm not happy with everything in it. For example, green waste, I'm really echo Councillor Sunich's comments. I'll tell you something else. In the 12 years that I've voted for the Labour budgets in this chamber, I've never been happy with any of them. Anybody who voted for a budget who said they're happy with all of it is either a fool or a rogue. Right? You're a fool or a rogue. In a budget involving over a billion pounds, how can you possibly agree with everything in it? You can be sure of it. It's an incredibly complex operation. So yeah, there's things I'm not happy with about it, but I'll be voting for it. Having looked at the budgets we've put forward over 12 years, I'm sorry, anybody who says that this is a uniquely vicious budget is a fool or a rogue. Mitch, you know better than that, and you shouldn't be paying the violin as you were. I want to add, though, why I think it's really important to vote for this budget. And it's to compensate myself, because I got a right bollocking off JTAC before. Because I forgot to mention something. The Lib Dems asked earlier if we'd read the Cal report. Yes, I read the Cal report, and I disagreed with quite a lot of it, both its omissions and commissions. One of the things that we should learn from it, which is relevant to why it's really important to support this budget, is something it leaves out. Um, it didn't, we didn't, I didn't mention holding out in the list of things that you did, which of course started the process of prosecutions. So your hands are in there as well, comrades. Um, but if you read the Callum report, it's very clear 
that given half a chance the commissioners will be privatising the likes of LSSL. Now I think it's as important as a socialist how you spend money as how much you spend. And I'm proud of the fact that when we insult in a number of services, we actually save money and improve services. And I don't want to give an inch to this Tory government to outsource services, which is what I think is a risk, if we don't set a budget and actually end up giving loads of money to their mate. So as a socialist, I'll vote for this budget. Do I agree? Do I agree with everything in it? Of course not. If anybody thinks they do. But I think there's no great point of principle in doing this. And if you've been voting for previous budgets and you suddenly say this, I'm sorry, I don't believe you. You are not crossing an impossible line and not voting for this. I'm a fellow war councillor with Councillor Hinnigan, um, but I have to disagree with her on, on this issue. Um, Linny's been my mentor, my friend, and I like flying at times. But I really feel sorry for my Labour colleagues, well, my ex Labour colleagues. I, th I believe you were given an unfair ultimatum in terms of choosing between the green bins and the MF. I, didn't, I don't think it needed to be that way when we've got 10 million reserves. Yeah. Um, that was a critical choice by this cabinet and I completely think they're in the wrong for making it. Thank you, councillor. We'll now move into the votes. to be conducted on the main budget recommendation. Councillor Banks, Barrington, Lyle Bennett, Ruth Bennett, Berry, Brandt, Chris Brown, Lawrence Brown, Calvert, Cardwell, Clark, Klein, Coleman, Conception, Bull, Connor, Corbett, Crofts, Crowe, Cummings, Delahunty Keogh, Harry Doyle, Sarah Doyle, Dunn, Gorn, Gibbons, Roy Gladden, Ros Gladden, Gorst, Hanratty, Hansen, Harvey, Hayden, Heron, Hinks, Hinnigan, Hurley, Juarez, Kelly, Kemp, Key, Nib, Knight, Kushner, Billy Lake, Fraser Lake, Lavelle, Logan, Mace, Andrew Makinson, Liz Makinson, Marrett, McAllister Bell, McIntyre, Amelia, Mitchell, Maloney, Morton, Mumby, Murray, Nicholas, O'Brien, O'Byrne, Parsons, Pitches, Prince, Kadir, Bradford, Roberts, Robinson Collins, Robinson, Rothery, Short or Wall, Simich, Simon, Small, Smeader, Smith, Story, Sun, Thomas, Thompson, Tulin, 
Tory, Walker, Walton, Wood, Woodhouse. We have the result from the votes, 47 for, 27 against, and no abstentions, so the motion was carried. The annual pay policy statement for 2022-23, can I invite Mayor Joanne to move the recommendation relating to the statement please? Can I move that the annual pay policy statement for 22-23 as set out on pages 427 to 446 of the agenda be approved? My Lord Mayor, could I ask the Mayor a question uh, about that? Uh, could she let us know whether 